It's all a matter of perception Where we stand in space and time There is no you or me that I can see Only delusions of the mind Welcome back to Soul Perspectives. I am Kip. And I'm Evan. And today we're going to answer this question or give you some advice on this. How do we love our enemies? Ah, oh, please. <laughs> there are so many reasons to hold negative feelings towards other people or entities or the corporations or the evil government, any of it. Enemy combatants, uh, foreign countries, take your pick. Anyone who's been programmed for us to scapegoat and call an enemy or any person who's caused us negative emotions and we feel the resentment towards them that makes them an enemy to us. And you know, I, I, it got me thinking about this whole idea. We walk around spending a lot of time tolerating one another. All that does is make you build up more and more resentment. I think a lot of our enemies would turn to friends and allies if we took the time to try to understand one another more. I think we would see ourselves more in that potential enemy and we would see them as friends when we saw that they were much more similar to us than they were different. Right, and we've said in previous episodes how understanding is the antidote to resentment because the snap judgments stop our thinking, our thought, our expansion of our thought. And so this is about being open, being about, about being open to recognizing, wait, I've, I've created a lock in my brain. I've, I've labeled them an enemy. I've labeled them someone harmful, causing pain that I resent. And that means that we are carrying around pain, resentment, and blame. And who's the one who carries that? Us. So when we proclaim an enemy, when we determine that someone is an enemy, we're then carrying around enemy feelings, feelings of animosity. So we may want to try and spread some of that over to them and shift it over and, and, and outwardly blame them and punish them and make them feel some of our pain. But how much of our pain are we even going to be able to impose upon them and transfer over to them? It doesn't matter. It's still the tip of that proverbial iceberg. You're seeing that little bit of pain. You're transferring that little bit of pain, but we're carrying that massive chunk of it around ourselves. So this is as much about healing ourselves as it is being compassionate and forgiving towards them so we stop punishing them and carrying around not only the initial resentment, but the shame and guilt for having punished someone when we probably recognize in our heart it's really not our place to go around punishing and, and um, harming. And the, and the truth is, when we go around trying to punish and harm, we're continually punishing and harming ourselves. Not only aren't we healing, we're making things worse. And we're not only taking and razor blades all over you, razor blades all over me, until we're just a mass of scar tissue and we can't even feel each other anymore. And we're happy and we think that the best we can do, again, is just tolerate one another. But think about what that does to your heart if I say, I'm gonna tolerate you. That makes me mad. Wow, you're just gonna tolerate me? You don't wanna know me? You don't wanna understand me? We're walking around deciding to make enemies instead of allies and friends. And again, this has to start with us. This has to start with us looking in the mirror and saying, what is it about this person or this situation or whatever I find myself in, this group of people, that is making me feel like I can't trust them, I don't like them for what it, whatever reason, and look and say, is there something that I'm seeing in them that is something I dislike about myself? I know just speaking for myself, I do it all the time. I'll, oh, God, and that stop. Oh, yeah, that's me. Not, not such a bad person after all. It's really just, I'm angry with me. I'm angry with that shadow part of myself that I see in the other. Instead of really being angry with them, I'm really angry with myself a lot of times. So how do we love our enemies? It starts with us. How do we love ourselves? How do we heal the internal pain that we feel so that we can then go out and forgive and find comfort in even being with people whom we've really resented because we've fully forgiven? And it starts with being open, proclaiming ourselves open, 
opening ourselves, rethinking what we think, recognizing that we're conditioned to put things in certain places and that those might not be the healthiest places for things to live and that when we open, we can find new space to allow things to be yeah. and to heal ourselves and, and forgive. And a lot of it comes from patience and acceptance and the thought process itself. It's a process. Healing is a Absolutely. process. It's a journey. Forgiving is a process. It's a journey. So A, it's about proclaiming ourselves on that journey. How can we love our enemy? Proclaim, I'm going to learn how to love my enemy. I want to heal. I choose to heal. And set that intention, plant that seed, and our mind will figure out new ways. If we never set ourselves on that course, if we get stuck in the resentment, we're going to find new ways to resent them. We're going to find new things to blame them for. We're going to find new ways to punish them. But if we set our intention at healing and learning to love our enemies, we'll find new ways to forgive. We'll find new ways to love. We'll create more space for patience for ourselves. And then, instead of the shame and guilt over all the blame and punishment we've done, we're going to start to feel pride and gratitude for how we've been able to heal. And that's going to spread. And now we create what Barbara Fredrickson in her book, Positivity, calls the upward spiral of positivity. I recognize it's possible. I share with you the gains I've made. You're astounded and proud of me. I realize I've influenced you positively. Absolutely. You start trying it out yourself. You realize it works. And you spread it to the next person and so on and so on and so forth. And, and we live in a world right now where we can see the outcome of years, decades, millenniums of building up resentment, of tolerating one another, you get to a point where you can't anymore. And that turns into a fight, into a war. And we start to really do physical damage to ourselves and the planet. And we forget that to interact with one another, to be ultra social, as you say, this isn't like some flight of fancy. We need one another. Mm -hmm. We've forgotten that. We've forgotten that because there's so many of us. Our cities, as far as size and scale, become unmanageable. We've lost, we've talked about this, our sense of purpose in the tribe. But we really need one another. And instead now, we've, with as many people on the planet, we've never been more isolated. Like I heard just recently that millennials, 50% of the millennials either feel, either have no friends or feel entirely isolated. In this world where we have an, a million ways to communicate with one another. That's how much resentment's built up. And I think about, you and I were talking about this, and as crazy as this sounds, I know a lot of people look at Donald Trump as the ultimate enemy in a way. I love Donald Trump. I see the beauty in Donald Trump. He has made me see the flaws in our system even more clearly than I could see before. He's made me take ownership for my part in this very broken system in a way I thought I had, but boy, it's gone deeper. Because I, if I'm pointing the fingers at Donald Trump, I'm not really owning the fact that Donald Trump is me. The system is me. I have helped make all of this happen. He's made me want to be a better person, and I thank him for that. He should make all of us want to look in the mirror and say, hey, what have we done with regards to civil rights, the environment, you name it. Have I really been the best version of myself, the most loving version of myself I can be? Because really at the end of the day, what we're talking about is moving from that fear-based thinking where everything is enemy to where love-based thinking where there is no other. So you mentioned that we need each other and I always like to qualify yes. needs when we must do something or we need something or we should do something. I just like to qualify it. And so the way I would qualify this is to say, in order to be healthy, emotionally and physically, we need each other, we're interdependent. And in order to have any hope, it seems to me, Absolutely. to thrive as a species, as a society, however you wanna break it, it up, yeah. we need each other. And in order to be able to rely on each other all the more, we need to do more of this forgiveness and acceptance. And I think that is a great place, to st as good a place to start as any in terms of defining that we have this need, so now how do we fulfill this need? How do we accomplish getting over the, the hurdles that stand between us and forgiveness and patience and acceptance and not having enemies? Absolutely. Recognizing we're on the same side. Well, and, and we talked about a, a couple days ago, I don't remember on which show, but we talked about, let's stop for a moment and, and look at these people that we're calling enemies. 
Are they a threat to me? Are they going to do me harm? These people that I don't even know. You see these people running around the country. Oh my God, we're being invaded by Mexicans and people from Central America. They don't know these people. They've never interacted with these people. These people are not a threat to them if you're living in Iowa or North Dakota. They're a threat to take the job that you didn't want to begin with. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But we do this. We People all over the world, we're making enemies of people who just aren't a threat to us and would be our friends and, and lovely allies and just huge, important parts of our lives if we allowed that. Yeah. So it's every different level from the person who has actually tangibly caused us some harm or negative emotion to the ethereal enemy out there yeah. that we've been conditioned to blame and scapegoat. Those are all, if we're carrying the concept of blame them, they're the enemy in our heart. In our, it's not really in our heart, it's in the cloud of fear around our heart. If we're carrying that, that becomes the recognition of the impetus to heal, to forgive, to find it in ourself. And I'll also use this opportunity to restate that self-preservation is the highest form of love. Do what you got to do to preserve your own sanity, emotional health, physical health. And recognize that we can still make choices. The, the people that we're so concerned about threaten our emotional health. So breaking free of them as, we, as much as we need to do to get that breathing room to be able to do this healing that we would need to do in order to move forward from having these in order to love our enemies. I can love you at a distance. If, if, if I recognize you have the pot great potential to cause me harm, then I need to keep you at arm's reach. But that doesn't mean I can't accept you as you are, allow you to be who you are, and even still love you. It sounds ludicrous. It sounds impossible, maybe, to you. But I'm here to tell you it's definitely possible and is worth pursuing for sure because it's going to help us find our own emotional health. And, and you know what occurs to me as we're sitting here thinking, the other thing that happens when we make someone an enemy, even if it's a bully, someone who, you know, say has physically attacked us or in some ways, and I, I dealt mm -hmm. a lot with that in high school. It, it, if I can't forgive, and you know, not to be biblical, but just turn the other cheek sometimes, I'm not able to see the damage in the other person and I'm not able to reach out and try to help heal them. Beautiful thing to bring up because people are damaged and if we're going to feel compassion for victims, recognize that perpetrators 9.9999999 times out of 10, if not 10 out of 10, were victims themselves or are and continue to be victims themselves and that's why they perpetuate and commit these acts of harm towards others, physical or emotional harm, because they themselves have been harmed. That behavior has been normalized. They are hurting themselves and don't know how to cope and are expressing themselves in ways that are not consistent with who they are, a loving, you, social, ultra social being who needs each other. But we lash out because we feel unsupported and we have a hard time coping. And, and a great example of that, and I don't mean to bring up Donald Trump again, but Donald Trump was literally almost abandoned entirely by his mother. He was totally in love. And now you see how that is manifested in his adult life. Mm. His relationship to women, his, his, his anger at anyone he perceives taking away some of his abundance. Um, this all came from a little boy who was unloved. And that's in large part, when I see Donald Trump, I see this little boy that needs love so badly. Mm. And, it, and unfortunately, it's probably too late for him, but that's all it would have taken at some point along with someone to really love him? Mm -hmm. For sure, we all need love because we are youth social and we could all use some compassion and there's so much pain going around Absolutely. and we're so conditioned to fall into patterns of not healing, not getting underneath surface wounds and symptoms and treating real problems and causes of mm -hmm. those symptoms. And so this is what we are inviting everyone to do to go around with the resentments and then to try and meditate them away or 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 eat and harm ourselves them away um, are not treating the cause the cause is that we've carried the resentment in our heart and proclaimed them our enemy and so we're treating this 
cause, the root problem, when we learn how to love our enemies. Imagine if we could love everyone without reservation. We've healed because we're now experiencing nothing but love. And what I'd like to do right now is I, everyone who's going to watch this, I want to remove any shame or guilt for mm. anything that you've done where you've made an enemy out of someone mm -hmm. for no reason, you're feeling mm -hmm. bad about this, because I want you to understand this is all a product of a system that is institutionalized fear. We're all under that. It's gone on for thousands of years. We, it, it's how we've been manipulated and controlled or still being manipulated and controlled. Uh, for instance, there's a really great documentary I told you about called The Great Hack, which it goes into how social media, it started off with some good intentions of speaking to our higher angels as far as how to connect Connecting us. us yeah. But pretty soon it realized, nope, we're gonna double down on the fear. We're, we're gonna, gonna double down them. the fear, we're gonna get the reaction because fear makes us react. It doesn't allow us to think deeply, it doesn't allow us to mm. problem solve. It leads, it leads. It, yeah, it, we want it, the quickest solution, get me my gun. Get me my gun, that'll solve my enemy mm. problem right there. Mm -hmm. It's no solution. No. If we all kill each other, there's no one left, no. you know? If we kill all the perceived enemies, we'll get a new batch because we're under so much pressure and we're having to cope with so many what we call razor blades to the heart. We, our hearts bleed for all the harm that we're witnessing across the board all around us in the people we love and care about and random strangers and refugees and, and the like. And I can say 100% as far as I'm concerned, I do not know how you can heal if you're continuing to wound yourself. We have to be able to stop for a moment and just say, for a moment, forgiveness everywhere. We used to even during World War II, we'd have Christmas or whatever, where everyone would put down their guns. Mm -hmm. I always found that fascinating. You mean you can, you know, you can stop shooting one another and you do and you hug one another and then you go, what? You go right back to shooting one another. Yeah. No, we can stop hurting one another. We can stop killing one another. We can stop harming one another. And unless we give us ourselves that moment to say, all's forgiven, there are no past grievances. Mm -hmm. And we look forward from a, with a clean slate. I don't know how we heal. Mm. So I also want to share that this conversation today was inspired by a post we saw on the feed of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, about patience, forgiveness, etc. And uh, we're very grateful for his calm, wise, insightful manner. And there's so much value there being put out there. It just depends on which voices we're listening and responding to. And then I want to reiterate and deepen something that Kip said about if you are carrying around any shame, any guilt, because you've caused harm, you've bullied, or you've over blamed or punished someone for something and then oh maybe it wasn't my place to do that we forgive you you are forgiven feel that let that resonate and sink in you are forgiven you are as good as you are right now and if you choose now to heal yourself so you can help heal others then we applaud you and we encourage you and we support you keep going Anything you want to share, type it in the comments. We will respond. We are here for you, and we love you, and we are here to be the change. And as my shirt says, thank you, I love you, pass mm -hmm. it on. And Sean, Jason, be the love you wish to see in the world. Let's all take that on as our purpose, our goal, and our mantra, and our our way of life, our, our way, way of, of being. Life, our way of being. And, and at the end of it, the day, there aren't any bad people. There are only people that are part of bad stories. Mm -hmm. We can change our story. And it's just as easy to write a story about a fear and enemy as it is to write one about loving an ally. And at the end of the day, it's all a matter of perception. Yep. So check your perception, 100%. open your mind, be willing to rethink everything you think. We are here to inspire the conscious evolution of our species through inspiring the conscious evolution of each and every individual alive. So come to souldocumentary.love and love us because we will love you back. We welcome you into the Soul Tribe. We love you. We're so grateful you're here. We'll be back next week with more Soul Perspectives. In the meantime, go with love. One, two, three, four. It's all a matter of perception.
perception Where we stand in space and time There is no you or me that I can see Only delusion 